Uh, call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on November the 14th, 2023, at just past 5 p.m. I'm going to ask Ms. Tishner to lead us in a prayer and pledge the flag. Come on up to the mic. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, just thanking you for an opportunity to be here tonight, gathered together with like-minded individuals, Lord. We pray tonight, God, for your wisdom, Lord, most of all, God. We pray that every member of this court, Lord, that your wisdom would fall upon them tonight as we make decisions, Lord, that, that affect our lives, Lord, real lives, Lord, lives that you love and care about. Father, tonight, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for everything that you do in our lives, and, and we just thank you for this county, Lord. We thank you for moving and operating throughout this county, God. We see your work, Lord, and we thank you for it tonight. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jim. Uh, before you have the uh, minutes of the uh, October uh, 24th meeting, we need to uh, uh, a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Jason. Second. Second by Michael. Uh, any discussion, corrections, or additions to the minutes? Is there any discussion, corrections, or additions to the minutes? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion passed. Before you, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers. We need a motion to approve. What? Was there any late? Was there a late list? No. Well, no, no late, late list. Two no times in a row for the record. Bills and claims are transferred. I'll make a motion. Motion by Michael McKinney. Second. Second by Jason Bullock. <clears throat> Any discussion? Any discussion on the bills, claims, payments, and transfers? No discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Polls like sign. The bills are paid. Before you have the treasurer's October 2023 financial statement, uh, at this point, all we need to do is acknowledge we've got it. Acknowledge, make the knowledge that we bought. Jason. We didn't buy anything. We got a uh, 2023 financial report from the clerk. Okay. Motion by Jason. Or was it the financial statement? I'm financial. sorry. The treasurer's financial statement. Yeah. I'm sorry. Do I have a second? I'm still trying to buy something. Sorry. Second. Second by Bob. I heard you first. Got it. Is there any discussion or questions for the treasurer? Big none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. And I don't see Bess here, but we have her uh, uh, same thing, October report. Need the motion to acknowledge we got it. Make a motion we got it. Motion by Bo Benny. Second. Second by Mike <coughs> Kenny. Is there any discussion on it? Any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Like sign? Motion carried. Okay, next one we have resolution 20, 24 days, 8. And the purpose of this is to uh, re uh, prioritize a couple of, of the items on the uh, lid, half fill list in order for us to, uh, the purpose of it is so we can go ahead and buy the corner and while the price is there, it can go up 10000 if we don't buy it. So we're moving the money up so we can get So the, the money was in there, you're just, you're just moving right. it from right. one yeah. spot to another up to the top. Yeah. I have a motion to approve that? I have a question. Donnie, you still got, you still got that? The quote. Yeah, the, have you still got that held or? Yes, it is still held. Okay. I spoke with her last week and explained to her uh, that we would know something 
one way or the other this week, and she said that was perfectly fine, and that I could get with Ann. And no. You went ahead and run the ad in the paper, yeah. didn't you? It, it has to be advertised, and the court has to accept the bid. The next court meeting is December 19th. I also have to get concurrence letters from the House of, you know, Scott Lewis and Senator Meredith. That's a real quick issue after we do this. That, that's a quick term. They just have to prove this. Yeah, but it's a quick term. I might could get it in a day. Get if it we're in lucky, day. is there in? You we'll still have to advertise it, and the court still has to accept the bid. So if you want it before December 19th. We'll, we'll do a special call to do it. As soon as we get these steps gone through, these mm -hmm. hoops jump through, uh, we'll, we'll call a special call. Just right, to I'm it. sorry, I didn't realize that I was one of the folks to make the advertising. Yeah. Well, well, we're okay with moving up front. I mean, that's what we're voting on tonight. Anyway. Right. Got a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion with Jason. Have a second? I second the motion. Second by Michael. Um, any discussion? Being none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion back. Do you have a copy of that list, though? The the order of the list. We'll get it to you. Brandon. Oh, sorry. I don't. Um, you know. I do. Yeah. I mean, there's only one it. thing. Uh, there's only one other thing on the list after these two. Okay, what is it? It's the sheriff's vehicle. No, there's there's some other stuff down the list. No, it hasn't been. It's all been approved in a okay. resolution. I'm sorry. These yeah. things that work. But this was this van was on there that was it was approved. We're just now putting the van on there. But I, I had said it on the budget that you've had for some time. Yeah, yeah. Oh. This would be the first time y'all I mean y'all just have to do it by okay. resolution. All right. Yeah. It's been on the list for some time. Yeah, that's what I was going to okay. yeah. well, I was just kinda of, I was just going to see the, the list and where we where everything was on the list. Okay. Oh. You, you want to see it? No, no, we have no vote on the resolution. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, on favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Okay, now then, um, Justin, Everything you're up. Done already. Okay. Uh, yes, they just requested to maybe uh, prepare uh, an amended policy for the drug, alcohol policy that would include uh, marijuana and some of the changes to the laws with respect to that. Uh, I think I emailed uh, the proposed uh, policy change. Uh, you should have it in your packets also. I don't know if there's any questions or any concerns, but uh, uh, we worked with uh, uh, one of the state troopers. Um, who's uh, a, Dalton Malak. Uh, Dalton, who's certified with respect to a lot of uh, he's DRE, so a drug recognition expert, and uh, uh, he kind of gave us indications as to how the policy Should be given. Yeah. So, uh, uh, do I have a motion to uh, do the uh, to approve this uh, policy? Yeah, I'll make, I'll make my motion. motion by both. So, of you. explain that. I'm sorry, I have some. It's right here. Yeah, yeah. I got it right here. I'm looking at it. Okay. Explain the marijuana part of it. Can, can we do a second? Then we'll discuss. It. Second for discussion. Okay. Second for text. Okay, I'm sorry, Jay. They're trying to Yeah, so this what when we looked at this, um, in some of the, the, the policies and procedures, uh, they certainly cannot uh, someone cannot uh, use, possess it or consume it or or, or um, uh, transfer it or anything of that nature while on the job. That would include alcohol, marijuana, any controlled substance drug that's not prescribed. So uh, prescribed medication would still be permissible, certainly. Uh, however, any use of any drug, if it gets to the such that uh, it impairs an employee's ability to perform his or her job or where such use, possession, distribution, manufacture, or transfer affects the reputation of Ohio County and the general public, then that could be something. So that's that's kind of some more general language. Um, 
and uh, and then the last one was if you are convicted of some type of of crime involving one of these, you just to notify your um, head of your department and let them know so that they're aware of that. Uh, so it's something that you certainly can table and look at and review and discuss if you if you wish. Uh, it does have an employee assistance program, which means if we do have an employee that um, has an issue that they want to discuss with their department head, they can go to their department head and, and uh, uh, seek possible treatment or relief uh, from those uh, issues, uh, and that should not be, would be held against them. Any, any further discussion? They only changed the wording on the back half of it, but it was just words, it wasn't. Well, I mean, I'm, I was for this, but I, I just had, I, I didn't see the email, and I'm, I uh, just was wondering. you remember what that word was? It was one word in about three different paragraphs that Dalton has to change, or ask us to, and we did. Well, one of the things that, that, that Dalton wanted, as far as uh, issues with, with, with employees, and, and certainly on the job, if you uh, use some type of substance, whether before work or during work, mm -hmm. that impairs one's ability to function, similar to driving under influence laws that say, yeah. you know, if you consume a certain substance to the point that it impairs your ability, then then uh, this policy would... So if you have prescription pre prescription marijuana or uh, hemp or whatever, you're okay? Well, it, it, it's you can still restrict it. You, it that could be up to the court. Uh, even though they have laws now that would permit its possession and use and those things in certain conditions or certain certain medical issues, uh, you, the court could still restrict that use or possession um, uh, while at work. That would certainly be up to the court, but what this does here is just says it impairs the ability uh, and then uh, impairs one's ability to, to uh, to perform the work even if it's done outside of work. So if they were to consume alcohol, marijuana, or some drug, even if it was prescribed, that then impaired their ability. Like for instance, if you take some medication that says you shouldn't drive, and then you consume that medication and attempt to drive, that would be a concern for the court and the county, even though it was legally prescribed and you could legally use it. Uh, that's where the, the trooper had indicated that he wished for the word impaired to be there, impaired to be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's what, it, that's what the focus of it, yeah. a lot of it is. But uh, it would say that uh, the use, sale, possession, and distribution on site uh, could be prohibited. You know, a person yeah. could have a prescription, for example, for pain medication. They said take one every eight hours and they take eight every one hour, you know, it, 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 they're, they're going to be impaired. Yeah, imp impairment is uh, certainly something that was uh, very uh, very important to the to the trooper in relation to the Well, that's policy. kind of what, that, that's the only thing I'm looking at. I was reading over this because I, I haven't seen since the changes were in. I mean, I was part of the one. <coughs> My concern is, is the prescriptive and non-prescriptive. If, how do you know, because I, I this is just my personal opinion that, that they're, if it's prescribed, they're still impaired. They're probably going to be impaired, even though it's prescribed. How do we decide on our own then that they're impaired? Well, that's 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 going to be the difficult question. It's almost yeah. as if um, uh, an officer, when he pulls someone over for marijuana or something of that nature, sometimes it's impaired, is, and you you can see it. So here, I think it would be something to where if it calls the uh, department, either the head of the department or supervisor concerned, it's something that they should probably check into if they believe the person is impaired. And then it's going to kind of be what their observations are, what happened, all the circumstances, and that for the head of the department, judge, executive, and this court to consider. Would it be bad if we just held off to the next meeting? Oh, no. Just in that way, that way uh, Kenneth and, and, I mean, this is a pretty good, and let Larry look at it too. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be your full court, so that's perfectly fine. Okay, we'll table it and put it on the next agenda. Can I amend the motion that was made to table it? I, I would like to yeah. kind of just, yeah. yeah, I'm for it. I just want to kind of make sure. Is that okay, Bo? Uh, yes, okay, absolutely. Okay, I'll, I'll be there. Okay, then. We'd like to make a motion that we table this until the next meeting. 
Okay. Second. Bye. Bo. All in favor say aye. Aye. Just table until the next meeting and uh, we'll, we'll go into it then. Uh, we've been talking about it for some time. Uh, I've told Miranda that I think I uh, assigned this to the Procrastinators Committee as long as we've been building it. That's okay. Though. I do appreciate that we're looking at things thoroughly. We, we had something. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rip, yeah. did you have a higher sheet for the senior center? For what? Your senior center? Uh, no, I don't have one. Well, we don't have one here, and I thought we had one. They never came in and did anything. They never done it? They just talked about it. Okay. All right, I'm sorry. So we don't yeah. really have a uh, personnel issue. I know he took it, and I've just never seen it. Since. Uh, we have a request to take in a road, county line road, which you have in there. I'm sorry, let me back up. I had some notes on here that misled me. I'm sorry. We have ordinance 2024-2 admin code amendment. Uh, and you, one of you on the admin code committee can present that. We have three different um, Three different uh, little additions here. Do we need to do all three at one time or three different? I, I think all together, admin code uh, amendments. On page 20 of the ad, 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 admin code, um, section 1B, there's two little things that we took out the word pass, that the court must pass. We put that word and it said take, and instead of on down that line, you see it says shall. It said we should recommend that they replace that word with may. Um, do you want me to just read the whole paragraph or just? No, no, I think you're explaining. Yeah. They all know. But those two little words, if you see in the red packet, that just kind of change those two words there. And on page 41 of Administrative Code, uh, Section 2, we, all uh, we were removing down in 4B, it says within previous 12 months. Um, we found out that uh, KPPA have now requires us to begin the retirement of anyone who previously has been in the KPA system, so we have to do it immediately. So we used to say within the previous 12 months, but now we have to start immediately. So we're, we're removing within the previous 12 months from that section. And then on page 47, um, section 10, FMLA, uh, we recommend to add Ohio County Physical Court has established the following 12-month period guideline. 12-month period measures forward from the first date an employee takes FMLA leave. The next 12-month period will begin the first time FMLA is taken after completion of the prior 12-month period. So that's going to be added into it. Nothing's going to be removed, but it's going to be added uh, to this section right here. Yeah, we had to have a definition of the time. Yeah. So, and if anybody in the crowd or anybody in the public wants it, you can always get a copy of the administrative code look over. But those three three changes on those pages. Could you I just kind of kind of allude to what it's about? You're literally just talking about sentences and words. <laughs> I mean, well, it's I guess it's okay. Well, it's, well um, I mean, is there a section? What it's referring to? That's what I was reading. That's what I said, page seven, sections. Referring uh, to, I mean, just. Applications and hiring is the first okay. one. Okay. Basically, any person seeking full time or part time employment for Ohio County Physical Court must pass or submit the following. Okay. We took pass okay. and we took the word take. Not right. pass, I, I just wanted because you're literally just talking about sentences. Well, I understand that. But I, <laughs> okay. I didn't want to read. I was uh, just wanting, wanting to just a general. That's why I said you okay. can look at a copy because yeah. I don't want to. I'll give you this after. Yeah. Is, uh, if that's so I make a motion that we accept those well, three. I actually have to make it you second. Okay. Because it's not genuine. Okay. I can explain that if I need to, but I make the motion. Check the second. The, uh, on, on the motion to, add, to uh, admin, the admin code, if you will, uh, can only be done by the anybody on the court in the uh, month of June. Other months, the judge executive does some better. Yes, please. Bennett? 
Yes. Johnson? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. And, and it does pass. It has to be. Does she give you a copy? Since it's an ordinance, it had to pass by the majority of the full fiscal court. So four votes to the majority of the six. If it, anything else, it's a simple majority of the group here. But in this case, for example, if anybody voted against it, it wouldn't have passed. Okay, still passed. Uh, but it did pass because it got voted. Uh, okay, and of course we'll have a second reading of it the next meeting. Uh, county line roads in your packet, and all we need to do there is sign a viewing committee. And the viewing committee, I, I signed the last time to a road, never did do it. So let's see where we come up with. I believe Rip will follow through and make sure it's done on county line roads. So I'm going to do uh, Rip and. Uh, let me see who else I can, I can get here. Helen, do you think you could get off work someday, go to the viewing committee, look at the road? Sure. Okay, Helen, Beaver, I need one more, one more volunteer. Okay. County line, is that up where the proposal is up in Helen's it's district? Up, it's and, up in my yeah. district, yeah. So, and, uh, and the, um, I'm gonna put somebody else on that one. Let me see. Uh, I think you have to have Nick on there also, too. A what? I think yeah. you have to have Nick on there. Yeah, that's Nick will, and that's the third one. Nick will. But Rip, you'll have to stay on to him, make sure it's scheduled, and keep in contact with Helen. I just behave this tomorrow. I got Thanksgiving to the baby on I don't know. Not that it's in my package you've done here. But I need that. I'll go to committee report. Oh, okay, let me bring him in. Uh, I've got two other presentations. She's looking for a uh, the paper for, on this Rochester Dam Commission thing. But I've got two other uh, people here that wants to make presentations. First one we'll call him Jimmy Cantrader. With the art program, that got something to tell us. Yes, one of the proposals I have is a contract. Um, the contract is not a binding contract per se. Um, when we started the monitoring program and with the ankle monitors, the ankle monitors are kind of cumbersome, and we have had probably at least a dozen people I've had to go to the hospital take off because of injuries. Uh, where they work in certain workplaces where that's kind of a bit dangerous. Uh, the company that we deal with told me at some point they would have a GPS watch, like a smart watch that people would wear instead of that ankle monitor. They've got that developed now and we've got an opportunity to be one of the demonstrators for that and I've requested to do so but we'd have to sign a contract. It's a free demonstration. We've got 14 days to try them out, see if we like them. I never use a product that I don't try myself. I put it on myself. I, I try to cheat it, try to do whatever I can to see if it works properly. And this is just saying that we will return the product once we're finished with it after the 14 days. Uh, it's not going to be a cost to us unless something happened we didn't return it. But it's probably, something. sorry Jason, I would probably just suggest with that that if, uh, if if Mr. Contrell likes it and it works pretty well, I would imagine he would ask the court to approve a contract similar to the ankle monitors. And so I'd say if the court does is willing to entertain this contract, that they would also uh, permit the judge executive to execute a contract if it meets uh, Jimmy's approval and the judge's approval, uh, similar to the ankle monitors, instead of them having to come back again if these work. And as far as price right now, the ankle monitors, if we lose one of those due to somebody destroying it or something and we don't get restitution back on it, the ankle monitors would cost us $2,250. These watches that we'll be using will be between five and $700 replacement if they've done the same thing. So it is cost effective and it's only going to cost us about 40 cents more or the client 40 cents more for wearing it per day it is the difference in the price. And I think that everyone that would be wearing it would want to pay the extra 40 cents a day to keep them having to wear that large ankle monitor. And, and it's something that stays on there they can't, I mean... Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's just like a smart watch. We have a way of attaching it to them. It shows the time and 
when they're walking in public, no one can even tell the difference. They tell, but, it, but they can't take it off. No, they can't take it off. And it also has sensors on it as well. If they do try to remove it, it immediately sends us a notification that they have removed it. And I've got a few other little things if you guys just want to hear them or not, uh, as far as the program. Do we need to make the motion on that? Yes, please. For the trial period, is that what it is? And then allow him to. It allowed Judge and Jimmy to execute a contract if it's of a similar nature. Uh, and so, if you just, uh, if you wish, you make the motion for the judge to execute that and the subsequent contract if it is of a similar nature. That's my motion. Motion by Jason Bullock. Second. Second by Michael McKinney. Any further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. <coughs> motion passed. Have you got that with you for me to sign? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay, she got it. Never mind. I'm sorry. Go ahead with whatever she got for us. Okay. Just a couple I'm other signing. things. Just uh, I know we've got a new magistrate here. Uh, I've talked to Michael some about the program that may not be fully aware of what all we do, but we provide several resources uh, to people in, that's coming into the court system, people that's coming out of jail and out of prisons, to make sure they have the resources to be productive citizens. But since we was talking about the monitoring, uh, since we've been running the monitoring program, uh, we've had 169 people on those monitors since then, since we first started. For a combined total of 8,898 days, they would have been serving in jail. Uh, and I know you can't really calculate the prices this way because you still pay jail employees and so forth, but if you calculate it at the cost it costs per day per person in jail, uh, that would have been a savings of $386,364 um, if you could calculate that way, but still you're still paying staff and so forth, but if you look at it from that perspective. Uh, since uh, we started the program, We've had 377 clients that are residents of Ohio County. We've got 332 that are still active clients, uh, providing those resources for those individuals. Some of those that of the 377 have passed away or whatever. The reason they're still the 332 is because we keep those clients active. There's been some that's been very successful, but we track and assist them along the way for a period of one year afterwards to make sure they don't fall back into some kind of situation where they could reoffend again. And as far as uh, those numbers go, uh, we've had, we provided 2,014 resources to those 377 people. Uh, successful resources, this is the successful resources. Uh, the totals of those are, of those 2,000 14, 16.46% completed uh, treatment and is doing better and haven't <coughs> relapsed as of today. 15.38% uh, was housing, 18.88% we got employment. As far as IDs, birth certificates, so forth like that, when they come out of jail, they don't have those. Uh, we help provide those to them so that they can, they have to have those to work. And so we help them with that because a lot of us lost it along the way. There's, a, there's around about, uh, well, there's 1.98% of the ones that needed that, 1.17% needed a birth certificate. Other resources such as getting them signed up for public assistance, uh, also getting them on lists for housing and so forth was 43.62%. And out of the people that's been offered resources, we only had 2.5% that has refused, which is very few. Uh, and that's 100% of the things we've been successful with, not just the people that we've worked with, but that's been the success with uh, 377 clients and 2,014 resources. And any questions from anybody on any of that? Do appreciate what you did. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to congratulate you on your sports and award for this year. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, you made front page of the paper. Yeah, we're really proud of all that Archer program does and uh, I'll make one statement about it is uh, we envisioned it and put it in place as a, uh, a re-entry program to help people that comes out of uh, uh, being incarcerated to uh, to succeed and not reoffend, not end up back in the system and uh, that's working 
but also we were able to get be preemptive about it and the courts are working good with Jimmy on uh, keeping people from ever going, which is like that ounce of prevention thing that we talk about. So um, it, it didn't it didn't go the way our original vision was for it, but it worked better than, than that vision. So I'm really proud of that. Um, let's go on down to, uh, uh, I need to make a board appointment, and then we'll come back to the committee reports. Uh, the Rochester Dam Water Commission, one of the members on that commission was Mr. John Wagner, and he roughly represented uh, uh, Purdue because they have a water plant that gets water out of the river, and uh, he's gone, and we're replacing him with, I put up the name of Lee Hanner, and I need a roll call on that. Bennett? Yes. Johnston? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Fuller? Yes. We'll need to get a letter for uh, for Charlie to take back to it. Thank you. Now back to committee reports. I know we had some committees report at work today. I know y'all may it, so I guess I'll call on both uh, on his first on the on the uh, building building improvement here committee. Yeah. So the uh, HVAC revamp committee has met a couple times uh, about the HVAC for the community center here. Um, we have received a takeoff bid, you might call it, from um, Complete Comfort. Um, some of y'all might know the building in the last five years is uh, the HVAC has taken over $150,000 in repairs. Um, so this new system not only would take away a lot of that, but it also benefit the county in uh, electric and water bills both. Um, so I'll read this bid from uh, Complete Comfort for $772,600. Um, and what the HVAC committee has decided, um, we would like to make a motion to use the takeoff quote from complete comfort contingent on ALC funding and running an ad in the paper. Yeah, we'll take this bid and send it to AOC. In the sense you're just forwarding the bid to AOC, we're not yes. taking any action no. with respect to No. We're okay, and we'll bid later on. Yes. Okay. Just to kind of show them what the cost would be. Because yes, exactly. this, it shouldn't be any higher than this because surely the company that gave us the estimate would bid that, uh, wouldn't bid any more than that when they bid it. So then others would be competitive as well. This is just giving us an opportunity to do due diligence on the funding for the project. See how much we get from yeah. But the plan is, of course, to, uh, if it goes through AOC Pace, we, we, we do plan to, we'll proceed, you know, by advertising. Yeah, we, we see it as a viable project, but um, there's still some research to be done before we make a decision on that. Well, let's, uh, if you can go make a motion to do that, so if AOC approves, we go ahead and run the ad. Okay, so uh, I'd like to make a motion um, to use the takeoff quote from Complete Comfort, but I'd like to make a contingent on AOC funding and uh, run the ad in the paper. Do I have a second? Second. Will our ad in the paper be second by for more bids? Is that yes. What you're for? yes. Yeah. 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 <coughs> that would be it. Uh, uh, did you get the second? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, uh, if there's no further discussion, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like so. Motion carries. Uh, Jason, I know you was on at least one committee this evening that may have. Uh, we were on the admin code committee meeting. And, uh, what? and the weight sale committee. We, we did talk about a few things. We brought up the admin committee. Uh, we brought up the admin code changes. Uh, there are a couple things we're looking into, talking to. We're going to, but we're going to wait with a couple more magistrates being gone. And uh, 
to deal with those when they get back. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. But the committee will have a recommendation. Yes. Okay. With with y'all yeah, got a recommendation since the full court gets here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what? Any other committees meet? There, there's two two things we're looking at. Yes. Yeah. Any other committees meet? Uh, under under committees, uh, I just want to introduce uh, the new county uh, administrator. It started last week, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Rip Wright. Which y'all remember, y'all? I did vote to hire him, so he's here if he wants to just stand up so we know who he is or raise his hand. Hey. So you may remember he was around here a lot before last year. Um, okay, yes. yes I'm sorry. If no other committee reports, I'm going to call on Jennifer Tischer from our father's house. She's got something to tell us. And Mr. Tischer, if he wants to come out and help. <laughs> well, she don't even know. She's pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah, well, I had some technical difficulties today, this afternoon, and I, my printer went kaput on me. So you guys don't get a copy. Right now, <laughs> I can email it to you, like uh, Miranda told me before we started, but um, later maybe or afterwards. But so we're here. First of all, um, well, thank you guys. Thank the county for including Father's House in uh, with the coalition that we're going to try to go, you know, and uh, hopefully uh, get a hold of some of this opioid abatement money at a state level. You know, uh, we do appreciate that. You know, being a part of that. Uh, hopefully will help all of us that are a part of it. But um, but what I'm here for tonight, uh, of course the opioid abatement money doesn't cover uh, construction and renovation things, and that's what I'm here about tonight. Um, so first of all, of course, I don't know, some of you all weren't on the court, I don't think Bo or Mike was, back when the ARPA money first came out, uh, 21, in, in 2021, we came to the court with our knees. We hadn't opened yet. We were working on our building trying to get open, and you guys helped us. We got a $43,000 grant from the ARPA funds. Uh, that was the first time in 21, which actually helped us. That was probably half. It probably covered about half the cost of uh, renovating the building that our program is in right now that we've been operating out of for the last 14 months. Um, so at that time, though, um, it was kind of, you know, didn't really know for sure, but everyone was kind of thinking there would be a second round of ARPA funding that we could come back and ask for some more dollars to finish up our project. That didn't really happen. I mean, it happened, but it wasn't ever really available for us to apply for. I reached out multiple times, I think, to Ann and to, to Judge Johnston about that, and it was all of the second round was allocated before we ever really got a chance to apply for any of it or anything, so we didn't get any part of that. Um, so it was... Um, We've just been trying to kind of, you know, we're, 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 we're still moving along here. We're raising money. We're doing this, you know, but we really need we really need to cook this thing into gear. There's a lot that needs to be done, and we need to get this building done so we can get in there and get it, you know, get things going. So what we're coming here for tonight, um, of course, we learned that the $193,000 of opioid abatement money that was given to Ohio County, you know, the county's got a portion of that for, you know, just for the county that that's been put aside to continue the ARCH program that Jimmy's in charge of after the uh, ARPA money plays out. Because I know that's, that was one of the programs that you guys started with the ARPA funds. And um, of course this is going to play out here pretty soon. So so we were told that that amount of money is to be set aside for the ARCH program. So we really don't have any, you know, we can't get a hold of any of that either. So that kind of lands us at, well, what are we, you know, what can we do here? What can we come and, and present to the court or ask the court for. So we came to you guys in August, um, this past August, and you guys gave us $5,000 toward finishing up our intake room that we're working on currently. And at that time, when you guys gave that to us, uh, Judge Johnson said it was out of the ARPA funds, which, of course, to me, I'm thinking, well, I thought that was all gone, right? So I didn't really think much else about it. I'm just grateful for the help. I mean, we need that. Goodness, we need a lot of it. And then September 26th fiscal court meeting, um, it was discussed that there was approximately over $400,000 of ARPA money that had become available again because it was allocated for a homeless shelter 
that we weren't able, that the court wasn't able to put together. So imagine my excitement to hear that there's more money that's actually coming from a fund that's really was set aside for things like what we're doing, you know. So anyway, so that's what I'm coming to you for tonight. You know, I was listening to Jimmy just a minute ago talking about some of those numbers, and I actually crushed a few myself, and I never really even thought about it, to be honest, until recently this way. But I know, you know, for me uh, to come to the court and ask for funding to help with this project, of course, for me, it's a passion. I mean, it's me and my husband both. I mean, it's our passion to do this, but, but we've been doing this now for 14 months, and we've seen so much success, you guys. I mean, I wish I could... I, I, I was really tempted to just bring them all in here and show them to you, but you know we can't really don't have time for that. Justin sees them; he sees them in the courtroom, don't you? Yes, sir. Everybody. So, so see, we we we're being successful here. We have a lot of success with this, and it's pretty exciting. But I'm going to break those numbers down for you in just a second. But um, so anyway, we're coming to you about that funding because you know we haven't heard a lot about that, and I do know that the ARPA funds are for projects like what we're doing, and we need some. So. What, we've, what, we're, what we're needing, honestly, to finish this thing out and make this thing so that we can run this program at full capacity, full force, the way that we originally intended to, which is pretty much going to double what we're doing right now uh, once we have all these spaces open. So what we're looking at is, to finish this up, we're looking at $4,500 for bathrooms. We're looking at somewhere around eleven dollars for the kitchen. We have a dining hall and an entryway that has to be completely redone. That's somewhere around 8,500. We have, these are approximate, of course. I mean, we could get that down to the dollar and cent if, if we need to. Um, so we had someone come in and give us an estimate on epoxy flooring for all the concrete floors in there and carpet for the areas that we can't do the epoxy in. And that was around 18,000. Transportation, um, we, we actually have that part of it covered, just to be honest, but we, we have a transition apartment that we've already completely finished. It, it can hold five men, and it's been really successful. These guys are really using this. Um, we finished that. It was one of the first things we finished in the other building because there was such a need for it. So we've had guys that are transitioning out of our program into transition, and right now there's only room in there for five, and there's four in there right now. And it's kind of like these guys coming up for transition this is a safe place for them to go so that you know they don't always have a home to go back to or their home is full of drugs and they don't want to go back there so it's kind of an alternative a place for them to go to for the six months of their transition to to you know get established and get somewhere else and we help them do that we help them find uh you know safe apartments places that they can rent it's hard for listen it's hard for an addict a recovering addict with a bunch of felonies to rent an apartment it's extremely hard. It's, hard for anybody, it's really hard, right? I mean, I'm a landlord. Yeah, it's hard. So anyway, <clears throat> so we assisted, uh, excuse me, in all that. So this transition apartment has been successful in helping them to the point that some of the guys will get a little nervous when they're getting up for transition. They'll be like, is there any, any beds open over there? You know, because they're thinking in their mind, where am I going to go? So, so another part of this, we have space to do that for four more. But it has to be renovated. It has to be prepared. That's that's around sixty-five hundred dollars would make those available for these guys to use them. Um, we have uh, the opportunity to have partnered with some uh, with counseling, different just different behavioral health companies, and they're going to come into Father's house and set up there for our guys. And we need a room. We have the room. It's not much to renovate it, but we need the equipment to make that happen. That's around four thousand. Uh, we have a, a large event room that needs to be repaired, chairs, tables, possibly new carpet in there, just kind of depending on that part. That's around 10-5. So that's a grand total estimated around $68,000. So this is the part I think that, I mean, I guess I just hadn't really put a lot of thought into it. But you know, that sounds like a lot. I know it does. It is a lot. Uh, and you guys have already, again, a couple years ago, gave us 43000 So you're looking at, you know, a total of ARPA funding of over hundred grand for this, this recovery facility. Um, again, we're asking for this out of the ARPA funds. We're not asking the court to pay this. I mean, we would, we know we're not. The, I feel like, we feel like that this funding was put in place 
for things like what we're doing. And you know, so that's the reason we're coming to you with this number. But but here's the thing. So I talked to Landon Spurlock or Diller. Uh, I've been back and forth with him, messaging him, trying to get a trying to squeeze in a number because I'm not real familiar with a lot of these things. But anyway, I, we got to looking at this thing, and it's so I want to. I just want the court to hear to see what just in the 14 months that we've been there. So here's some of these statistics. The 14 months the Father's House has been open, we've had 28 men that were court ordered to Father's House from the Ohio County Court System. Okay, 28 men. They were court ordered from our court system. Judge Coleman and Judge Bowling both are very, very favorable Father's House. They send guys to us a lot. Um, so we, the, so out of, um, now this is a total, guys, in the, in the the 14 months. These are only the Ohio County ones. Um, so we've had 28 total. 16 of those guys are still in our program right now. They're still they're in various stages of it. Uh, 12 of those guys stayed just different amounts of time and left for whatever reason. You know, they relapsed and left, or they just left. They just weren't ready for recovery and left. Um, but for one client, for one of our clients to complete our 14-month program is approximately 406 days. If this inmate stays in jail for that time, it would cost the county $15,854. That's just for one guy. If they were only sentenced to six months of that, because most of the time, Justin can kind of maybe even speak on this, most of the time they're sentenced to recovery as an alternate to jail. But usually the jail time's a little less. You know, we have a 14 month program. Some of the guys that come to us, they'll be like, well, they told us we could do this or six months. You know, so they came to recovery because they wanted recovery. So if it's just, let's just, you know, if those guys are just six months in jail, in our county jail, that's still going to be around seven grand per person. So for one client to complete this program, that's a, that's a pretty big savings. So as of, as of November 12th, when I wrote this up, Father's House has housed 4,032 days from those 28 men that have been ordered to our program from the Ohio County Court System. Had these men spent this time in jail, the cost to the county would have been around $157,248. So right now, the 16 clients that currently are still in our program at Father's House, right now, those guys, if had they been in jail as an alternate, the state of the county, $546 a day, or $16,380 a month, whichever way you want to look at it. So, you know, the savings, that savings to Ohio County Court is going to grow as we grow. I mean, you know, if you take 16 guys and you double that, all those numbers double. So that's, that's why we're here. I mean, it really is, guys. We, not that, I mean, we, it's our ministry, it's our heart to, to help an addict, to, to get them on their feet, to, to show them there's a new life, that they can be free from this stuff. And we, we've, been, we've had success in doing that. But I just want you to know that even though this is ARPA funds that we're asking for here, it's saving the county money too. Because these guys are coming to us instead of sitting in the jail, which we got to have a jail. I mean, some don't want recovery. I mean, I get that. But, you know, some are there that do need recovery and do want it. And we do all this, we do all the legwork ourselves, you know. The county doesn't pay anything to send someone to Father's House. Nobody. Never has any, any, any money, any funding came from Ohio County in any way to send someone to Father's House. It's either a recommendation maybe, but they come empty handed. So we take it from there, right? Uh, our directors, they're constantly, they have, a, they have a beaten path to Ohio County Jail from driving over and interviewing people. You know, the, the public defenders call, you know, constantly about wanting to come interview someone that's, you know, they're see if, for us to see if they're a candidate. So anyway, we're doing the legwork. You know, we're putting the work in this, and we can definitely see this thing just being much more, much, much more than it is. And but we need your help, and we need to to be able to utilize some of these funds that are available now. So, okay. uh, do y'all have any questions? Here, here's what I think we need to do. Uh, I think we need to have a meeting of the court, a committee meeting on this, it could be the full fiscal court. And we need like a, a, a better written breakdown, yeah. and we need a priority list. Okay. Say, for example, if we can't do it all, right. you, What's most you, important? you rank them in your number one through sure. ten priority. Okay. Of what need. Is it okay with you, gentlemen? 
we will meet at four the next court meeting to discuss it. But we need this opportunity I can get that and more you. details on what this the sure. construction end of it's going to be. Sure, absolutely. I can email pretty, it. Pretty cold turkey. And if you guys don't have an uh, objection to that, that's what we'll do. And we, you can be there for that too. Okay. We need to kind of sit down and figure out what we're going to do with some of that stuff anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. so uh, okay. You yeah. know, guys, there's been a time that it, it's about four months ago that we had to turn some people away because we didn't have enough room in the other building. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually stopped taking clients because we didn't have enough room in the other building. Yeah. But like I said, if you can get it, uh, it's a lot of money. And like you said, we do have some other, we have other things too. Uh, so the thing is, if you prioritize that and come, and then let these guys have a little more thought on it. Sure. And when that's a one issue me. I'd like for some time maybe if some of us to come down there. Absolutely. I was going to say that. Yeah. Sure. Anybody sure. on the court that hasn't been there recently yeah. to tour, you need sure. to get with Mike and Jennifer and go. Yeah. I've been. It, it actually looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we've got, well. we've gotten, we've gotten, um, so we've got, actually they're supposed to be putting flooring in that this week, but we've got the, the, the two offices, the intake room that we can they got the five thousand with you uh, that finished helped finish that out so we got the offices the intake room and then the little community area that they're going to start using for for the actual program but all of that is complete um, which is not quite half but almost half when you when you add the apartment that we finished and you know we really have done that on donations we've done that on because we've ran this program too but you know the way we're doing it right now you know, it's sustaining itself. The guys are sustaining it itself, but there's not a lot, there's not much over, if any. So we've done that with our, you know, our fundraisers, our donations, our church partners, and slowly over the last 14 months, we've worked our way through that building. And we are, we have gotten to that point. So it is pretty exciting now to walk in there. And, and when you walk in there and you look to your right, it's like, wow. Then you look to your left, you're like, man. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, absolutely, anytime. You just. Anytime anybody wants to come check it out, by all means, we want you to. Come yeah. check it out. And uh, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but what you're saying is they do pay a fee. They do. With the ones that are working in April. That's right. That's yeah. what that's what runs the program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, thank you. Yep. Thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, We're ready for the master's comments and requests. We'll start out with you, Michael. No comments in the first district at this time. Uh, Jason? No, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to stop because I forgot earlier. I should have done this under committee, but this is one of your committees. Uh, in our leadership team meeting this morning that we had, uh -huh. uh, we are talking about for all of our uh, department heads, uh, our leadership people, to uh, keep an eye out. We've known and have made reports that our community, like the rest of the world, because of the changing world, we have a lot of people that are that are uh, depressed and desperate. So there is a meeting um, this Thursday at 11:30 at the. Uh, of course, we've kind of combined with the the, the health department. So they're meeting at what is today? Today's Tuesday, so Thursday it's 11:30 to one at the extension office. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Get lunch work. there too. Huh? Get lunch there too. Right. Yeah. So anybody that could attend would be great. Uh, I'm at a conference out of town that day, but I hope some of them attend it. Thank you, Jason. You got anything else from the 2nd District? Nope. Bob? Uh, nothing at this time. Justin probably don't because he laughed. <laughs> I don't know if he had a daughter to pick up. Uh, okay, it's fine. I'm just, I'm so we're just doing one meeting next month? Yes, the 19th. The 19th. Oh, that's planned, but we, it, we'll probably have to have a special call for Donnie's bid when it comes in. Okay. But we'll do that real informal, and, and we might t make him take us at, uh, to a, a, uh, out to eat or something <laughs> for that meeting. Now, uh, and two, this is something we just came up with, so we want to do it right. We come up with a form that we want people to fill out when you want us to make your arrangements for a conference. You still have the option of doing it yourself, but we do a much better job if we do them together. So and and we so we don't overlook things and make any mistakes. If y'all fill this out and get it to us, and we've got a paper 
trail of what we need to do. Did you give everybody a copy? Yes, and I will email you a copy as well. There is one that's going to be blank. You can use it for the next conference, whatever you want. And there's one already filled out for Washington. Uh, give it a look. If you want to go, go ahead and sign, and I'll get all the information as soon as I can. I know it's very detailed. I may have to ask you for more information depending on the conference. Last time we had to pretty much give a drop of blood to go into that one, so. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and Jason got held up in limbo there for a while. So did Sam. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the list, too. Yeah. <laughs> so I do, uh, I do uh, appreciate if you do that. If there, is anybody in the general audience got anything for the benefit of the body? If not, we're going to declare this meeting adjourned. And I'm going to ask Jason Bullock if he'll stay back and talk to me a minute.